Another hook that can be extremely helpful for us is uh, use context. Now, similar to React, use context allows us to have a context object that then is shared across all of the components that are the children of wherever we're sharing this. Uh, this allows us to basically have data shared between components uh, that doesn't need to be directly added as a property for each component. What do I mean by this? Well, let's imagine we have um, 10, 10 nested properties deep. So we have our application at the top level, and then we have 10 levels of children. So the children, the, the child of the app has a child, which has a child, which has a child, and so on. Now, if I have something that all of the, the components need to have access to, um, and I don't want to just have a duplicated um, sort of property and just drill into everything and share the thing that everything has, a context can help out for this. And this is really what they're meant for, is something that everything can have access to. Because once you give a context, access to a context, you can't like just say, oh, oh you have access to that and you don't have access to that. Uh, it's now going to be, well, you just have to, as a programmer, not use the context, which is if we're going to use a strongly typed language, something we, you know, we're allowing the, co the compiler to enforce these things for us. Anyways, that's a brief, brief, brief reintroduction to what a context is. Uh, let's go find documentation for where it lives. So in you, uh, I'm going to come down here and there's a couple places. So in concepts, there's the context uh, page. Now, if we're on 0 0.19, context is uh, talking about the struct style of components, which we're gonna get into a little bit later. Um, however, it does talk about what a context is, and in very general, how to create the context, which is, uh, which is gonna be important. Uh, then in function components, we have the predefined hooks. And this down at the bottom, we have the use context. Uh, and so there's the example here of how we're going to set this up. So specifically out of this, we're looking at creating a struct that is the context. That's the data that we're gonna be passing into the context. Uh, we have to use this use con uh, this context provider tag uh, this component, which is at the base root level of U. This is not included in the prelude, so we will need to bring it out ourselves. Uh, if we go back to the main context page, uh, something really important. Let's see, where is it? Right here. Um, if you're using a context and you mutate that context, which you can only do at the, the root level where the context is created, then all of the children will be re-rendered. Um, this, this is important because if not everyone is using that context, that could be really expensive and can cause maybe think like maybe a flicker or something if you if everything has to re-render all at the same time. So I would be careful, like once again use context for things that everything needs access to, or make it really small context that don't change very often. All right, well, let's jump into the code and actually create our own context. Um, I have an idea of using this custom form that we previously created. So if we go and take a look at oh, what this form looks like, we had our username, our favorite language, and this submit tag. Okay, that's fine. What if I wanted to, after we submitted this, um, username and favorite language is now just available to all of our components and they can then print that out if they want to or do, do certain things. Um, so first of all, in our top library, let's bring in context. I'm gonna rearrange this just a little bit. I like to have mod at the top. Okay, so we're gonna use you. Uh, context provider here. Um, we're gonna update this div 
to be a context provider. Um, the close one and the top one, we still need to do a type for this. So we still need to say what type this is going to be. Well, we haven't created our context yet. So let's do that next. So let's maybe use like a, um, uh, like just like a user, like user, user information. So we'll do a pub struct, uh, user. Um, we're going to have a username, which is a string and a favorite, uh, language, which is a string. Um, we also are going to need to make these public so they can be read and accessed. And now we can state that this is going to be a user. Um, now what we can do is just create a user. So let's do a let user equals user. Okay, so our username, let's just do, um, to owned and favorite language is gonna be Rust. Okay, that's great. And then for the first part of this tag, we need to tell it what the actual context is. We need to set it. So context. Um, and in this case, we're just going to set it to be this user. Uh, what are you upset about? Okay, so it's upsetting about that we need a uh, user needs to implement clone and partial equal. So let's go ahead and derive that right now. So debug is perfectly fine. Also, I've been ignoring it for most of these, but uh, it's perfectly okay to set all of these things to debug uh partial equal and clone so now you're happy um and and this first pass through that we're doing is going to be an immutable context there is no way for us to change this once things are going as you can see because when we when we submit the form that's not creating this user it can't update the user we just don't have access to it. But we're gonna to get to that in a little bit. Let's first uh, use this and um, consume the context as it were. So we have this state, we can now have access to a use context. So let, um, we'll, I'll name this as a user context, equals a use context. Uh, we also need to give it the type here. So this is a user. This is an option. So we do need to sort of grab this out. Uh, I like to, to make things a little bit easier on myself, myself, also derive default for this, which is gonna allow me to use the unwrap or default uh, uh, method on objects. Um, okay, so we now have this user context. I want to now display, uh, favorite language and username down here. So we're gonna say p tag uh, username and this is gonna be our user context. It's an option, so we're going to unwrap or default. Um, and then I can access the username. And I want to do the exact same thing for favorite language. Okay, where is that error? Here it is. Um, you are upset because I 
Oh, used to move value, use your context, uh, value used here after a move. Um, okay, so we have this option user, which does not implement the copy trait. Uh, so I want to clone you. Uh, I might see where I need to put this clone. Right here. So we're going to clone the option and then use that here and then use the option again here. And then when you clone the option, it clones the contents of that option to it. Basically just reruns clone on everything inside. Okay, so that should display these. Let's save. Uh, everything is looking good. Let's go take a look at what we have here. We have username Brooks, favorite language Rust. Okay, great. So this is this is now a static um, context that we're passing down. This can be passed into any component that is inside of this context provider now has access to that. So if I wanted to, main title could get access to my username and favorite language too. But let's say I wanted to change the context. Something happens, like maybe that form gets submitted uh, and we want to update the context now. Well, we're gonna do that here in this uh, custom form submit, uh, which means to update you and to have access to the new version, we are going to use a use state inside of here. So let's go ahead and create a state. So we'll do a use state uh, for a init function. We're going to create a, I'm just gonna do the user default. So it'll start empty. Um, this gets removed. We don't care about that anymore. We now have user state uh, for this custom for, for, sorry, for the context provider co uh, context, I need to extract this out. So we need to take the user state, but this is a use state handler. So I need to deref that, uh, but then I need to clone it after I deref it. So I'm gonna do the entire deref dot clone pattern here. Um, okay, so now I've converted this into a uh, into a use state pattern. Uh, what are you upset about? A redundant closure. Replace the closure with the function itself. Oh, okay. So I can just do. Just do that. Passing in the default function to be used later. If you're if you're familiar with JavaScript, this is very similar to just leaving out the parentheses in a JavaScript function and just passing in that as a closure or callback. Um, okay, so everything is still working. Uh, now we have default. Default for a string is always empty, so that's why we don't have anything listed here. Um, now, when we get this uh, this form submit, we're going to want to update as opposed to just logging. Um, now, a trick to make these things a little bit easier, and I uh, is we can we can throw this into a block. Um, and then we can do our clone of the user state in this block. As soon as this block ends, that clone will be dropped and we're sort of like creating a little bit of a scope for ourselves. So we can do a let uh, user state. I'm gonna shadow user state here and we're just gonna clone it. Uh, and the, the, the main reason to do a block like this would be to basically encapsulate this this clone into a shadow uh, inside of a, a singular block that we can then later on fold down and makes it a little bit easier to read. Also, we can use the same name instead of constantly doing like clone user state uh, and then shadowing that over and over and over again. All right, so I have this user state here. It's unique and different than that one, even though it's cloned. But we're gonna move that into here. Um, we're not going to log anymore. We have access to this data. So now we're gonna say, I want, uh, we, we need to get the user out. So that mute user. 
equals, we're going to take our user state. Um, we're going to do the deref that clone trick. Um, now we have access to the user, so we can do user dot username. It's going to be equal to data dot username. User dot favorite language equals data dot favorite language. And then we have to remember that the entire point of this is to get a callback. So I'm going to remove the parentheses from this, uh, this entire callback. So that way it gets returned into custom form submit, which then gets passed into this on submit. Otherwise you're going to get a very interesting error where you're basically trying to pass nothing in for this callback. All right, everything seems to be working. So let's go ahead. Oh, you know what? We've forgotten one other thing, which is gonna be kind of important. After we've mutated user, we need to reset it to the, the state. So we're gonna do a user state dot set uh, user. That should trigger when this is updated, a refresh of this HTML because state has changed. Uh, which then causes context provider to realize that state has changed, which then will cause a refresh of all of these children components. Let's try it out. So if I type in Brooks and Rust, hit return, and they get set for us. So now we have a context uh, that we can update if necessary, um, and that is shared between every component that's a child of the root component. Uh, so once again, uh, just a warning that you probably don't want to use context unless it's really for something that's shared on everything or it doesn't change very often, uh, mainly just because of those recompilation rules. You don't want it to, or I guess recompilation is wrong, re-render rules. You don't want it to re-render just needlessly. For example, this high there, got re-rendered, even though it doesn't care about username or favorite language. Perhaps properties would have been better in this specific example, but uh, um, I could definitely see at times where like maybe having a user and like a token and knowing that it's logged in or not could be something that goes into a context, plus that doesn't change very often. Anyways, hopefully that was very helpful for you. Um, thank you very much, and uh, I will see you in the next video. Bye.